Welcome to Tech Surge News, where we bring you the latest in the world of science and technology. In this video, join us as we explore futuristic and groundbreaking tech that'll definitely knock your socks off. Today, we will talk about the different breakthroughs in solar panels and how efficient these actually are. There's always the hope of a big breakthrough that will start changing everything. Scientists have just broken the solar panel efficiency record, which could have far-reaching implications for the future of renewable energy. This is not just more hype. It's a reflection of where things are now and where they're going. There have been many recent advances in everything from perovskites to organic solar cells. So, how does this affect you and me? Let's have a look. Solar power is essentially the ancestor of the renewable energy family, and for excellent reason. There is an infinite source of energy shining down on us every day, just waiting to be utilized. One hour of solar energy is enough to power the entire world for an entire year. The major disadvantage is that we cannot collect all of that energy. The innovations we take for granted today were breakthroughs a decade earlier. So today's breakthroughs are where things are headed. If you've been waiting for the right performance indicator, perhaps a target efficiency rate or the right type of material to enter commercial use, your wait may be over. But first, let's go over some of the more fascinating updates and what it all means for us. First, we must discuss some of the most recent solar news which is that the U.S. Department of Energy's National Renewable Energy Laboratory recently established a new solar cell efficiency record of 39.5%. This was achieved under similar lighting conditions to the sun, which is a significant improvement over the previous world record. Earlier experimental solar cells demonstrated top efficiency rates of 47.1% in 2019, but only when exposed to extremely high temperatures with super concentrated light. NREL isn't the only one who's had success increasing energy output by modifying their solar cell design. A University of Surrey team multiplied the amount of energy absorbed by their wafer thin photovoltaic panels by 25%. The panels are only one micrometer thick, but they have a honeycomb like layer that allows for light absorption. For silicon cells, at least one third of the light that strikes this cell bounces right off. But the rich design of these thin photovoltaic cells traps the light in the solar cell, increasing efficiency. Solar panels are typically associated with silicon, but there has been a persistent beacon on the solar world's horizon, perovskites. Perovskites are a type of synthetic material distinguished by its crystallographic structure. They easily coat surfaces in general which means they can be used in cells alone or in conjunction with other technologies. These perovskite semiconductors can transform sunlight's energy-rich blue spectrum into energy, allowing us to reach efficiency rates up to 30% when combined with silicon subcells, compared to 25% in single-junction perovskite cells. Perovskites are supposed to be the golden trio, expensive to produce, competitively efficient, and lightweight and thin enough to be used almost anywhere. That's why researchers have been chomping at the bit to get them on the market. But there are a few logistical obstacles to clear before perovskites can compete with silicon cells. The first issue is one of perovskites' most significant challenges, durability. The thin and light nature of perovskite cells is a benefit, but it also means that they are fragile which is not ideal for a material that will be subjected to hail, sun, rain, and everything in between. Previously, samples would break before researchers could even make it across the lab to be evaluated. If the specimen cannot be handled in the laboratory, they will not be able to withstand occasional hailstorm or the stresses imposed on the solar panel frame by wind loading and torsion in the real world. What if manufacturing new solar cells was as easy as printing a publication? That's what the makers of organic power cells hope to achieve, and they're ready to launch this technology into the global market right now. Photovoltaic material is printed on flexible materials, such as plastic sheets, to create organic power cells. These paper-thin solar cells are entirely made of organic materials, 
lightweight, flexible, and quick to produce using printing technology. The same process as printing newspapers. They cost half as much to produce as silicon-based cells and are 100 times lighter. Each square meter weighs less than 2 kilograms, and this figure is expected to fall to 1 kilogram by 2023. Unlike silicon cells, their conversion efficiency does not decrease when used indoors, making them particularly enticing for devices such as sensors, smart speakers, and other wearables that may not receive a lot of direct sunlight. The efficiency rate of 10% leaves something to be desired, but these cells can be also be used for around 20 years, which already outlasts current perovskite lifespans. Let's take a short break real quick. If you're enjoying the video so far, then why don't you give us a comment down below because we at Tech Surge News would love to hear what you think. Also, it would be greatly appreciated if you subscribe to Tech Surge News while you're down there. On to the video. As more businesses begin to increase production, mass production has the potential to cut costs in half. These print-to-order solar cells are making their way onto the global market. Heliotech, a German startup, has begun mass production of organic solar cells. Brazilian startup Senyu has these organic cells in production as early as this year. Epishine of Sweden launched its miniature solar harvesting modules on the market in December. Boasting a 13% energy conversion rate and a 10-year lifespan, these can be used for fire alarms, temperature and humidity sensors, card readers, and other small but important devices that combines into the background. Then there's Rico in Japan, which began on a smaller scale. They only produce 100 square meters per year, but that's enough to power 50,000 tiny smart devices, ranging from wearables to tunnel and bridge safety sensors. Even these cool cells have room for improvement, and researchers have discovered two key developments that have the potential to truly assist organic cells in capturing that spark. These new solar advancements may not catch the average person's attention, but they are a clear indication that there is still more to solar energy on the horizon. So, what can we glean from these improvements, and what does it all mean for the industry as a whole? First, as exciting as breaking the world record for solar efficiency is, Norel Solar Design is not without flaws. For one thing, producing this type of cell is still going to cost a lot at this point, which is already a problem in the renewable energy industry as a whole. Mass-producing cells with this degree of effectiveness may still be a long way off, and we'd have to figure out how to do it while retaining overall costs low enough to keep significant consumers out of the market. There's also a lot of flexibility in how we can use them. Even when textured, the film layer is still super thin, making them versatile and light enough to go almost anywhere. The next step is to get the show up and running by identifying commercial relationships and continuing to develop manufacturing techniques. As you might expect, that's no simple achievement in and of itself. And for the time being, this design is still a considerable distance from the market, an unfortunate fate for many promising renewable technologies in the works. Perovskite cells are at last on the market, but they're nowhere near where its fans and supporters hoped they'd be, and they're far from commercialized. Much of this can be attributed to their unpredictable nature on the field. Both silicon and perovskite solar cells have recently set records above 25% efficiency, indicating that power isn't always the issue. Endurance is. Unfortunately, after a few months of use, perovskite cells in the field lose 10% of their efficiency when compared to silicon cells, whose manufacturers guarantee that panels will retain 80% of their performance for 30 to 40 years. This is a difficult act to follow. Manufacturing will almost certainly be the last major barrier to commercializing perovskite solar cells. It's a catch-22 situation. We need financing to ramp up production and develop cells on a large scale, but financing will only be available if the scale-up appears viable. The good news is that perovskites do not have to outperform silicon cells. They can be used in tandem cells, which consists of perovskite layers stacked on top of a silicon cell. Because the materials absorb different light wavelengths, complementary energy harvesting occurs. And what about organic cells? 
These lightweight and flexible cells could be used almost anywhere, including domed roofs, glass and other oddly shaped surfaces that couldn't support the heavier silicon panels. These guys are unlikely to power your area anytime soon, but they have found their own spot, smaller devices, including wearables. What's the big deal about wearables? Most are powered by single-use batteries that must be changed every one to two years. This is significant for this segment, given that the global market for smart sensors alone is predicted to reach $29.6 billion by 2026. According to Markets and Markets, current solar energy is insufficient for these smaller applications because silicon does not work well indoors, and perovskite cells only last a few years. However, if you're thinking about going solar for your home, don't put it off any longer. Solar panels can be maximized. Today's technology is efficient enough to accomplish many of the goals you probably have for your home. Waiting for the next big thing almost guarantees that you'll always be waiting, because something better is always around the corner. Thank you for staying around till the end of the video. To keep on hearing from us, feel free to subscribe down below and hit the bell button to get the latest notifications. Tech Search News, signing out.